The African American cultural tradition is really a genius form for figuring out how to look at a very bleak circumstance and imagine it in such a way that more possibility comes out of confronting it than not. You think of, you know, the blues as a, as a genre and as a, as a consciousness, it invokes such a profound recognition of both limitation and dynamic engagement with it in such a way that you have enough distance to imagine something else, even as you're fully wrapped up in what's happening. And one of my favorite lines, you know, which is sort of a simple blues line, but it's very common in a number of songs, is, you know, if it weren't for bad luck, I wouldn't have any luck at all. I mean, think about the tragic, comedic, you know, dynamic that that produces. You're like, well, what do you want luck for if it's only going to be bad luck? Well, you never know. It might turn. <laughs> The Center for the Study of Race and Ethnicity in America at Brown is a wonderful opportunity uh, for the campus and hopefully the country to really think of us as a hub for creative, intellectual, and social movements and ideas to produce a more just society. We really think that, you know, this question of race and ethnicity is intersects with almost everything that we could possibly think of in the United States. And it's an opportunity to fix a lot of things by fixing something at the core. One of our missions is to take scholarly ideas, which sometimes can be abstract and not necessarily super accessible, and to find people who are comfortable translating those ideas in accessible ways, taking ideas that matter on the ground and helping people in everyday life use them or think about them and reflect on them. And one of the areas we, I'm focused on bringing to Brown and, and to the center is the focus on media images and the ways in which mass media ideas uh, dramatically reinforce some of the most negative and pernicious I conceptions of black and brown people in particular, and that those perceptions also then drive policy. The goals in my teaching, I have many goals. Uh, one, first and foremost, is to change the frame. I have to illuminate all kinds of information that has been hidden and by keeping it hidden has obscured all of this really important information. I am very optimistic or, or probably more appropriately hopeful um, in, in human beings and human spirit. I, I actually think that we're pretty extraordinary as creatures and that there's a lot of possibility and that you can reach really productive tipping points in surprising and unexpected, unanticipated times and, and circumstances. In other words, my hope is not dependent on what tomorrow's gonna look like, because really, <laughs> it's not looking that great on a few things. But I think, you know, one of the things that I've been really inspired by is the reinvigoration of, of mass action for freedom. When young people say, look, we don't want to be under the rule of someone 40, 50 years who's you know, basically not doing anything in our interests, um, that spirit is at the heart of a kind of possibility that we must not underestimate. It, it drives everything else. It drives creativity, it drives our art, it drives institution building, and it drives that notion of imagining more than what you have now, not just because you're gathering it for yourself, but because you want the whole world to have it.